every camera is great at certain things and no camera is great at everything. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So this is going to be a really short vlog. It is in response to one of the comments that we received about the last video. It was a lot of like push pull on that video. You know, you got the people that absolutely are just in the Panasonic camp that think that, you know, I'm just hating on the camera, which I'm not. Um, but uh, it was a, a lot of kind of back and forth. And one of the questions had to do with focusing, follow focusing, autofocus, this type of thing. and. Uh, um, I was talking to him about this camera that I'm using right now, which is the 80D, and some things that you can do with it that I thought was extremely cool. One of them is the software that I'm using right now, and you can probably see it in there, hopefully, without too much of a... There we go. Anyways, what this software does is allows me to take a look at what the camera is seeing, but on my iPad. So what I really like about this software is it allows me to focus on myself or focus on something else in the frame and also see what I'm getting that the camera sees, but I can't, let's say, be behind the camera. So like right now, we're focusing on me, right? If I just simply click on Harlequin on the iPad, you can see now I'm blurry, but Harlequin is perfectly sharp, right? Now, if I click on myself again, you can see it will go ahead and move right back to me. And it'll go back and forth. I'll click on Harlequin's face back there and you can see she's sharp. And then I'll click back on me and now I'm sharp. So, very cool. This is really a great technique or a great program for using like an ADD, for example, on like a jib or some type of crane where the camera is way out someplace where you can't get to it. For example, let's say you're shooting a wedding and you have, um, let's say an assistant have this camera on a boom, right? And it's taking, let's say a wide shot or of like the first dance or something like that. Well, you really can't see what the camera is getting and you have to then hope that focus tracking is actually working well and getting what you want it to get, right? So very easily is you can have someone with the, you know, have the camera up on the boom. Now you have your iPad and you're just going along, focusing on the father, focusing on the mother, focusing on the bride, focusing on the groom, whatever you want to get in this scene. Very, very useful. So going into the Panasonic G5. Now, um, you know, I was talking about how the G5 follow focus was really not that great. And there was a couple of videos I notated in the comments in the last video that you can go see. I didn't get a chance to um, actually review the camera itself. I just haven't had time. I've just been absolutely slammed. Um, but regardless, I really trust one of these professional photographers that I did notate. Um, and I did share their couple of videos on it and I know he's going to do a good job as far as testing. He tested the camera absolutely at nausea. I mean, really, really deep testing. I mean, for like two, three, four days, um, more than I would have ever tested that camera to be completely honest with you. So it's really good information. But the problem was, was follow focus and it just wouldn't you know, catch, let's say, faces properly, and it wouldn't follow the, it wouldn't track the subject very well. And of course, you can use this type of method where, you know, you're just going around and clicking wherever you want to click. Panasonic does have a similar program that will allow you to do this. But the problem is, is how about if you don't have that capability, number one, and you are a run and gun shooter and it's just you, and that's really about it. So at that point, you have to rely on the camera to catch the faces and hook up on me, for example, and not Harlequin behind me, even though there's a face on her. It's very, very problematic as far as what I see with the GH5's tracking. I mean, I couldn't use it. Now, I'm hoping that this can be resolved with for example, a firmware update. I really don't know. I don't know if it's internal to the camera or if it's actually um, just you know, a software issue or is it hardware? I really don't know. But I hope Panasonic gets it straight. I really do because it's a 
awesome camera. I mean, the, the picture quality on it, um, on the photo side is absolutely just tack sharp. It looks fantastic. It is an overall exceptional camera. Do I think it is a $2,000 camera? Well, I think it is if it really was a 422, you know, 10 bit recording, 60 frames per second, 4K machine, right? that actually track focus properly. I would say yes, 2000 bucks, it's a steal because there's nothing that's doing 4K 60 frames that's at that price out there. So I do think it would be an awesome buy. But as just a photo unit and that's it, or maybe um, let's call it a video unit, a 4K video unit, but you have to pull the focus yourself or you have to like, for example, with this, select you know, here I'm gonna code and select on Harlequin and now she's in focus or then select back on me and now I'm in focus where I'm actually having to do that. I don't know if $2,000 is the right price specifically for that camera, but that's just my opinion. Now, you know, I know people get, like I said, you know, crazy when it comes to um, quote unquote camera bashing and they think that a lot of times if I'm doing a review on something and I'm telling you my thoughts on it, well, that's just my, th you know, my thoughts. Take it with a grain of salt. The same way as in the last video I said, I really think there's going to be layoffs happening at uh, Panasonic. No one has said that as of yet. I'm putting myself kind of like on the line or on, the, on a limb that's about ready to break. But I really do think that's going to happen now that Panasonic's digital imaging division is said to be, you know, relegated to the appliance division. And that's why in the last video, you know, I had the microwave oven with that specific camera, the G, you know, the GH5. But no matter what, as that division closes and moves into the appliance division, there's going to be many people that are in the current digital um, imaging division that will be relegated. They're gonna be history. That's just it. I, I mean, that's why I say what I say as far as I think that they're going to be, um, let's just call them layoffs happening in the near future. So regardless, um, if you do have the GH5 and you wanna be able to pull focus yourself, by all means, grab this program, this Panasonic program. It seems to be working pretty good. My understanding though is that the program doesn't work very well at 4K. You have a lot of lag and that makes sense because it's having to transfer a lot of data to your iPad or to your smart device of whatever kind. So um, also bear in mind these programs, either for Canon or uh, for Panasonic, they work on not only an iPad, but they work in Android. They also work on iPhones as well. Um, I use this ADD at the end of a boom or on setup on a tripod some far, you know, someplace like 20 feet away. And I've looked on my iPhone and actually controlled the camera right from the iPhone. That is absolutely just a godsend. That just works out fantastic when you don't have enough help with you. So let's say you have one um, assistant, but you know, but if you need two assistant, well, there you go. Now you have an assistant on your, on your iPhone. You can set up the camera and now control it um, still where you are, let's say 20, 30 feet away via this internal Wi-Fi um, ad hoc network that it produces, that it creates right from the camera. So anyways, I think it's really cool. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to the back of the studio and I'm gonna show you this in action a little bit more with a couple of these little, um, let's call it figures from my son that I borrowed. And you'll be able to see um, what I'm talking about in a little bit more in-depth detail, a little bit clearer than what I was showing you in here. So anyways, let's go take a look. So all right guys, here you can see three little figurines that I have set up. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out by pulling focus on the closest, then the one that's kind of medium um, length away, and then the one that's the furthest um, length away from the camera. So I'm gonna start out here with the first one, which of course is the creeper. We're gonna click on that, and you can see how it pulls focus on that pretty quickly. And then we're gonna move on to the second one on the left, and then we're gonna pull on focus all the way to the back. And there you go. So anyways, guys, that's really about it. I hope you like this kind of uh, little impromptu vlog in response to one of the comments that came out. Um, bottom line here is, I really believe that every camera is great at certain things and no camera is great at everything. 
Being that said, you find the camera that works for your needs, what you need it for. For me, like I've said in the past, I'm a full frame shooter. So all of my events are done on full frame. If I'm gonna be doing fashion, it's going to be on a medium format camera, period. I'll rent whatever one I need in at the time. It just works out well. If I'm gonna be shooting something that needs to be a far distance, like let's say it's going to be um, an animal in the distance and I'm shooting nature, let's say, chances are I'm gonna put a crop sensor on one of my big massive, you know, three, 400 millimeter lenses and get all that extra distance out of the crop. So there's specific needs that you have and then there's specific cameras and lenses for those needs. So you just pick the right one. So once again, you know, no hate on the Panasonic. I'm just making a comment as far as what I see. Once again, in the comments below, put your thoughts on it and how you use it and how you get around currently if you're using a Panasonic, maybe a G4 or a G5 for pulling focus. Are you using their software um, to do it or are you allowing it to do what it needs to do by itself? Are you you know, kind of touching the back of the camera. What are you doing for your focusing? So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, throw me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get all of my nonsense when it becomes available. And head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can find a lot of photography tools that I've invented for photographers just like you. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys.